And well guys, you can now use XESS 2.1 on AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. And by the way, this is nothing new, of course, in terms of super resolution, but you can now also use XCSS frame generation and XELL, literally now. Oh my. Going here, for example, you have XSS Super Resolution, and as soon as we go to frame generation, you now have the AMD FSR 3.1 frame generation and Intel XSS frame generation, something that wasn't working before. And by the way, you can upgrade this in order for the games that support XSS frame generation and XLL to work now with your AMD or NVIDIA card, which is Awesome, and let me tell you that XSS frame generation is actually better than FSR 3.1 frame generation in most scenarios that I've tested. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, I'm Fabio Pisco, oh! and of course, welcome to my channel. And just to tease you a bit more, like I told you, I can use XEL low latency, XE low latency, which is XELL, and as soon as you press on in games like Cyberpunk, you're actually able to select the frame rate target, meaning that instead of having to use VSync or instead of having to use some external option to lock your, your FPS, inside most games you have the, the frame rate target option and you can imagine just go here and select 152, 54, whatever the, the frame rate that you want and it will lock the frame generation as well. So it will lock the FPS with frame generation and it will work perfectly. It's just great, believe me. Almost as great as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So how do you update your games in order to make this work? Firstly, you need to go to your Google Chrome or to Google, whatever, and just search for XESS 2.1 SDK. You have the GitHub SDK, just go to GitHub. Then you go to the releases and you can see here XESS SDK 2.1.0, open it, go here and download it. I already have the file on desktop, so I don't need to download it, of course. Then you open it and the files that you need are in the bin folder, the libxell, libxss, libxss dx11, and libxss fg. I believe that if you're using the LSS swapper, by the way, there will be sooner or later an update that will allow you to use XESS 2.1, something that isn't here, I believe, yet. We only have the 2.0.1. As soon as we have the 2.1 here, you can select and you can use the LSS swapper to make this upgrade. As of now, you need to do it manually. So again, let's say that we want to, to upgrade to 2.1 Expedition 33 in order for you to be able to use XESS with an AMD card, since the game doesn't support FSR yet, you can use XESS XCSS, XCLL, and XCSS frame generation. So you go to your games folder, in this case, for me, it's games SSD. Then I go to Steam library, Steam apps, common. Then we have Expedition 33. And in some games, the, um, the, um, the XCSS, or in this case, the XCLL and so on files, aren't really on the same folder where the XE is. For example, engine, binaries, oh my bad, sandfall, binaries, Win64. So here we have the executable and usually the files are close to the executable, but in some scenarios like this game, they aren't. So you need to search a bit, I believe it's in engine, then plugins, marketplace, XCSS, binaries, third party, Win64, I know it's long, and then you just copy these DLL files, replace, and you're good to go. So we're now running Expedition 33, and as you know, the game is quite heavy. And as you can see, if you don't upgrade the game, the only things that, or the only thing that you are able to see is the XCSS scaling type, so the super resolution. You don't really have these options enabled, the, XL, the XLL and XSS frame generation, but now you do since you upgraded the files. So let's start with low latency, and by the way, uh, some games do allow you to lock the frames, some others don't really do it, which is a bummer. I would like to see that option in every single game. So now we have XCLL. The frames are basically the same, no changes whatsoever. But yeah, latency for 58, 50 something FPS is very good. And I can tell you, I tested it a bit before doing this video, of course, and I tested it in some games and different computers. And I can tell you that I, I do prefer XCLL 
to anti-lag 2. Anti-lag 2 is fine, but I believe that XLL, even on the MD cards, works better. Just works better. As for frame generation, well, let's try it, since we really need it in this case scenario. So, XSS frame generation. It enables automatically the low latency in most case scenarios. Apply. And we're now hovering around 90, so we went from 60, 60 something to 80, 90 FPS. Which, considering that we're running XSS, something from Intel and not AMD, the performance is not bad at all. And one thing that I immediately noticed is that XSS frame generation is consistently, at least in the games that I tested, is consistently smoother than the... Um, than FSR 3.1 frame generation. Now, FSR 3.1 frame generation will most likely give you more FPS or higher smoothness usually, and when I say smoothness, higher smoothness number, so more FPS, but regarding the actual smoothness of the gameplay and stability of the gameplay, I do believe that XCSS frame generation does a better job since, according to Intel, XCSS frame generation is also... They actually changed, they have two versions like they do for XCSS, so they have two versions with two different instruction sets. And what happens here is that um, the XCSS frame generation is still based on AI. So Intel won the race, won the race versus AMD on the AI frame generation. They will release it with uh, FSR Redstone, and Intel is actually using AI frame generation, AI-based frame generation, and AI-based upscaling with XCSS 2.1. I know that you're looking at the frame timeline, and it seems very, very odd, but this is just how RTSS reads the frame generation because it now works differently. Uh, so MS Afterburner still has issues while reading it. It seems this way, but in terms of smoothness, it works very well. And believe me, since we have XLL, the latency is very, very small. Even with only 80 FPS and frame generation, the latency is not that bad. In this game, much better, much better than anything that AMD has to offer because they don't really have anything to offer here. Now we go, games SSD, GOG, Cyberpunk 2077, BIN, X64, and in this case, the, the XLL files and XSS frame generation files and so on are alongside the executable, the application. So it is on this folder, the BIN folder X64. Just go again, BIN, copy these files, bam, and you have your game upgraded to XSS 2.1. By the way, do this mostly at your own risk for single player games. With single, pla with single player games, sorry, you're completely fine, but with some online games like Marvel Rivals and so on, you might actually have trouble, so don't do it. Or, of course, do it at your own risk. As for Cyberpunk 2077, uh, the latest update didn't do much performance-wise. It actually runs worse than before, which is a bummer, so if you can just use the update 2.23 if you don't really care about the new the newest features. Um, and yeah, we're using basically 4K with XCSS performance, I believe. We can go to XCSS balanced, and we are already using XCSS frame generation. And as you can see, one of the things that I like the most about XCLL in Cyberpunk is that you have an option to select a maximum frame rate. And that's really great. And of course, as soon as you enable frame generation, XLL will be automatically enabled in most case scenarios. I must tell you right away that even though that we have, uh, let's say, 50, 60 FPS base, XCSS feels quite well. I mean, in terms of latency, I can move the mouse very, very quickly and the system will respond, the game will, res will respond very well. So the latency is very low. If we're having around 100 FPS with frame generation, it means that the base frames are around 60. And yeah, the latency just doesn't feel like 60 because we're using low latency mode. To be honest, it just works great. And the same applies to the frame generation smoothness. I mean, <laughs> even with lots of generated frames in between, I can tell you that it works very well. And the higher the base frame rates, the better it will look and the better it will feel. So go to performance again and we now have a bit more FPS, 114 and now it feels even smoother since the base frame rates are quite higher. And we're hovering around 112. Let's imagine that I don't really want that many FPS. I have let's say 100 Hz. I have a 100 Hz monitor. So I can just go here, go to the XLL option and select the maximum frame rate of let's say 100. Apply, 
and immediately I have my frames locked to 100 and I have them locked with XCLL, meaning that the latency is not bad. And <laughs> I mean, you guys really need to test it because we're talking about 50 frames or 50 or 60 base frames to 100 locked with XCLL and the latency is very low. It's, oh, <laughs> that's a bug. And it's perfectly playable. I mean, perfectly playable, way better than some other games that I've tested without frame generation and we're getting frame generation and the latency is very small. So th this is a big win for AMD and NVIDIA users with older cards like the RX 6800 or the RTX 3000 series. Yeah, it's just a great addition, definitely. So in my opinion, if you have XCLL and XSS frame generation, just use it because it feels great. It performs great, it feels great. Even if you want to play the game, let's say, like without any kind of upscaling and just with frame generation, I mean, it just works well. It just works very nicely. Now I did the same exact process to Black Myth Wukong or for Black Myth Wukong. And as we all know, FSR in this game just looks absolute dog shit. And I mean, the FSR version that they have here is so bad that even if you use OptiScaler to just enhance it with a 3.1.4 version of FSR, it will look much, much better. And of course, if you can use FSR4, if you can inject um, FSR4 inside this game, it actually looks very good, but with a native implementation, it just looks so bad. I mean, look at this. We're using 4K performance mode, and as the character moves, you can see the pixelation. It's so, 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 so bad. And in this case scenario, I updated the version, but it seems to not be enabled here, even though it has frame generation. A few moments later. And yeah, I actually copied the files again, but it seems that Black Myth Wukong doesn't really work. Sadly, but it doesn't. Hogwarts Legacy, on the other hand, does work and works pretty well. And we're running 4K, by the way, let me just show you. So we are running FSR 3 quality mode. No ray tracing, I believe. Let me just... Yeah, we are actually running ray tracing and that's why the FPS are so low. So let's disable ray tracing. I need to restart the game in order to disable ray tracing. Do I? Nah, the FPS just increased. So we're running 69 FPS, no pun intended, now 61, 62. Seems about right with FSR 3 quality. Let's see what happens if we go to XCSS frame generation. Two times, and XCLL is enabled automatically, as you can see. We don't really have the capping frame rate here option that was in Cyberpunk 2077. And we went from 40 to 57, 60. So the gain is quite low since the algorithm takes a lot of power, especially from an older card such as the RX 6800. But in terms of smoothness, it is definitely increased. It has definitely increased, I mean, from 40 to 60. And well, we can always try and use even though that FSR 3 is not that great and this game doesn't really support FSR 4 yet, unless you use OptiScaler, we can go to FSR 3 and see if FSR 3 quality works well with Intel XSS frame generation. And we go to 90 FPS here. And it isn't that bad F FSR quality. So FSR quality with XSS frame generation. And it seems that the XSS super sampling, basically the, the upscaler, takes way more power than the frame generation technique. And like I told you before, XCSS frame generation works very well, and FSR 3, if you use the quality mode here at 4K, is actually decent. It is not good, not even close to good, but it is at least decent, and we have around 80, 90 FPS, and XCSS frame generation does a wonderful job when it comes to smoothness. That, nobody can say it doesn't, because it does. So if you're already using XC low latency and if you're using XCSS frame generation, why not use XCSS upscaling as, as well? Just go to XCSS performance mode, which goes from to 50%, so from 1080p to 4K, and we still go up to 97, so around the same FPS numbers that we had with FSR, but the quality, the general quality is considerably better. In terms of pixelation, I can immediately see that I have less than FSR 3, which is great, and at the same time, uh, I don't really have that huge amount of shimmering that we had before. Which is a win-win situation. And since we're using it alongside frame generation, I believe that we do have an advantage uh, when using upscaler plus frame generation. From the same brand, of course. Again, anti-lag. I mean, anti-lag is fine. 
it isn't laggy per se, it is fine, but I just feel like Intel XC low latency, it might be placebo, I won't lie, it might be placebo, but I just feel it is more responsive. Yeah, it is more responsive. XC low latency is doing a better job here, I believe. Okay, now Intel XCSS frame generation, and the latency is still quite good. Yeah, still quite good. And we're hovering around 100 FPS. Nice. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I told you before, you can now, and I repeat, you can now use XCLL and XCSS frame generation in your games. You just go do the process that I did. Just copy the files, go download the XCSS 2.1 SDK, copy those files to the games that support XCSS frame generation and XCLL, and you'll be able to use it. And in games like Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy and Expedition 33, I can tell you that XCLL and frame generation and XSS frame generation do a very good job. And if I have to compare them to FSR 3.1 frame generation, which is the one that it is now available for the older AMD and Nvidia cards, like the RTX 3000 series that don't support the LSS frame generation, so you, you had to use FSR frame generation, and now you can use XCSS frame generation. And in terms of frame generation, I have to tell you, really, that XCSS frame generation works much better generally and much smoother, at least in the games that I tested, than FSR 3.1 frame generation, even on AMD cards, which is awesome. And as for XCLL, Intel XCLL is actually very nice, and I believe that it will be in more games than Anti-Lag 2 very, very soon. I don't really know what's going on at AMD, but it seems that Kind of, the developers kind of don't really care about Anti-Lag 2, they implement FSR frame generation, but they simply don't implement Anti-Lag 2, while with Intel XCSS, they implement uh, Intel XCLL alongside XCSS frame generation, which is a great thing. Well, it is what it is. For me, at least, XCSS frame generation and XCLL are a must for older AMD and older Nvidia cards. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know if you tested it and if you liked it or not. And see you in the next video. Cheers.